Do you have dry skin or do you have eczema? In this video, I am telling you the difference between just having dry skin versus having the actual medical condition of eczema, also known as atopic dermatitis. Both eczema and dry skin can look very similar in some people. You have that dry, flaky, or scaly skin, so it can be a little bit tricky for you to tell the difference. This is an important distinction to make because eczema should be treated differently than just dry, flaky skin. That means that you need different products and should follow a different set of skincare rules. So which category do you belong in? I am going to simplify this for you now. There are five major distinctions between dry skin and eczema that I'm going to share with you so that you will be able to easily determine what is more likely your cause of flaky skin and ultimately know how to cure it. Let's understand the basics first, starting with regular dry skin. Dry skin is a condition called cirrhosis cutis. It is super common. You can get dry skin for several reasons, and honestly, everyone at some point in their life has probably dealt with dry skin. There are internal causes of dry skin and external causes of dry skin. The internal or endogenous causes are things that are going on inside your body that will manifest itself as dry, brittle, or unhealthy skin. For example, a poor diet or even malnourishment can manifest as dry skin. People with kidney problems, diabetes, or people on hemodialysis can suffer from chronic xerosis or dry skin, and numerous other medical conditions can plague a person with dry and irritated skin. However, the more common causes of dry skin are the exogenous or external factors. For example, the climate where you live, if it's wintertime or you live somewhere where the humidity is really low, your skin will be very prone to losing water and drying out. If you have excessive exposure to water for prolonged periods, or if you take frequent long baths or long hot showers, or maybe you are a swimmer in the pool often, this can also really dry the skin out. Other external causes of dry skin are skincare products that are perhaps unknowingly harming your skin. Harsh soaps that strip the skin barrier, soaps or body washes that have an alkaline or high pH, much higher than the normal pH of your skin, or rough body washes or scrubs that strip away your protective skin barrier all allow too much water to escape. And let's not forget aging, xerosis of aging. Every day, your skin gets a little more worn out than the day before. This natural progression of skin weakening shows up as rough, dry, flaky skin. I see this every single day in my dermatology office, dry skin due to aging. Here is what's happening. The lipids in your skin barrier, which help hold water in and keep the skin hydrated, well, they start malfunctioning. At the same time, the other cellular components of your skin aren't breaking down skin cells to help them shed in a healthy way anymore. Instead, you are now getting a buildup or a retention of dead skin cells. And even worse, your skin isn't producing enough of a key component of your skin barrier called natural moisturizing factor. So the top layer of your skin dries out, becomes brittle, and takes on that rough, thickened, scaly, and cracked appearance. Now, here is your first big distinction between dry skin and eczema. If you have run-of-the-mill dry skin due to one or more of these factors, despite being a cosmetic bother, it shouldn't really be too symptomatic. It may be a little itchy at times and perhaps more easily irritated by some skincare products or certain clothing fabrics, but overall, it doesn't really affect your quality of life too much. This is the first big distinction between dry skin and eczema. Eczema, on the other hand, can be mild to moderate to severely symptomatic, causing significant distress from skin itching, pain, burning, and stinging. Don't worry, I'm going to delve more into the basics of eczema in just a minute so you can better understand the condition for comparison. The second major distinction between dry skin and eczema 
is location, location, location on your skin. The noticeable appearance of dry skin usually starts on the shins and lower legs. If you are exceedingly dry, it can advance to your upper arms, thighs, and even on your trunk. Eczema, or atopic dermatitis on the other hand, typically has a flare in certain classic areas of the body, such as the creases of the wrists, the flexures of the arms, or behind the knees. You can usually see eczema in defined patches on the body rather than just generalized dry, flaky skin. However, people with eczema also may have background dry skin as well, so you will also see the same appearance of diffuse dry skin on the legs and arms, as well as the eczema patches in other locations. The third major distinction is how each of these conditions appear on the skin. Yes, both conditions will have dry, scaly skin. If you rub your hands over your arms or legs, you can probably see a little cloud of skin cells swirling in the air. However, eczema is more likely to also have increased redness or inflammation of the skin. The patches of eczema can often be more thickened than normal skin, so they are raised up and they exhibit hyperlinearity, which is essentially just an accentuation of the skin lines so it can have a more of a wrinkled appearance. These patches may also look leathery or shiny. You can sometimes see scratches on the skin or cracks or fissures in the skin, especially if it's very itchy and you have been scratching a lot. All of these things give atopic dermatitis a classic and distinct look compared to dry skin alone. The fourth major distinction is how the skin responds to non-medicated skincare products for dry skin. If you have dry skin due to being in a dry climate, for example, and you use the correct type of moisturizer for your skin, and you're not doing other damaging things like I discussed earlier, the long baths and scrubs and all of that, your dry skin should improve. With the right creams and ointments or oils, the hydration of your skin should be able to be restored at least for 12 to 24 hours. You will be able to maintain nicely hydrated skin with a daily gentle skincare regimen and will not need prescription medications. Compare this to eczema on the other hand, if you are having a flare of true atopic dermatitis, it is often very difficult to control with moisturizers alone. Of course, you will absolutely need moisturizers in your treatment regimen, but in addition, it often takes prescription medications such as topical corticosteroids to effectively calm down the inflammation, to reduce the redness, calm the itching, and allow the skin barrier to repair itself back to a quiet state without symptoms. So a topical corticosteroid is the first line treatment for eczema flares. Beyond that, there are a variety of other medications that can be quite useful, but in general, it often requires something beyond basic skincare products. Now, you can get a topical corticosteroid over the counter, which is called hydrocortisone in the 1% strength. This is certainly an option to treat very mild flares of eczema, but most often, it will not be strong enough to completely clear the skin. So that's it for the fourth distinction. Dry skin should get better without medication, while eczema often needs medications. Now, the fifth and last distinction I will point out is that eczema skin is typically, not always, but typically associated with other factors like asthma, environmental allergies, or even food allergies, family history of these conditions, and overall, just really sensitive and reactive skin. If you have any of these things, it is more likely that your chronic dry skin may be some form of eczema and require more than just moisturizer. So what exactly is atopic dermatitis? We know so far what the symptoms of it are, itchy and irritating. We know what it looks like. It's red, raised, wrinkles, scaly, and all of that. We know where it typically pops up on the skin, the elbows, the wrists, and the knees. And we know that it is pretty stubborn once it's flared and usually needs prescriptions to clear it up 
and we know that it's associated with other systemic issues like asthma and allergies. Atopic dermatitis is caused by skin barrier dysfunction. This has more of a genetic component. You can see that this runs in families, so you can think of this as more of an inside out problem. Now, because the skin barrier is partly defective, a person with atopic dermatitis has substantially more transepidermal water loss than a person with a normal skin barrier. You can think of it like a lot of leaky channels or holes in the skin surface instead of a tightly held together barrier. So not only can more water escape, which shrivels up the skin, but also more environmental allergies can get into the skin, which drives a large amount of this inflammation and irritation. This drives the symptoms of atopic dermatitis, and because of that, we see a lot of scratching and rubbing the skin, which leads to even more barrier damage, more inflammation, and ultimately, more eczema that is harder and harder to control. I describe this scenario to my patients as the itch-scratch cycle. The more it itches, the more you scratch it, which is causing it to itch more, so you scratch more, and you end up in this vicious cycle where you are driving the problem with your own hands. It often takes the steroid medication and proper dry skin products to break this itch-scratch cycle. So now maybe you are finding yourself in one of these two categories, regular dry skin due to a health condition or external factors or atopic dermatitis. If you have just dry skin, you can totally fix this with a fabulous skincare routine and some skincare tips for optimizing your results from these skincare products check out my Fix Your Dry Skin video where I give you all of these tips. I'm linking that video for you to check out. As for dry skin products for your body, here are my top affordable recommendations based on my own use, my experience treating dry skin and eczema in my patients over the years, and hearing their feedback and seeing their results. All of these products will be linked below. First, choose a gentle, creamy cleanser for the shower rather than a harsh scrub. My go-to drugstore favorite is by La Roche-Posay, the Lipicar Wash for the body and face. This is hydrating and restoring to the skin barrier. I love that this contains niacinamide for the skin barrier. It is extremely gentle and it's even safe for babies as mentioned on the label. This is an amazing and safe wash for dry and sensitive skin that will give hydration, not irritation, and protect the skin barrier. You can pick this up at the drugstore for an affordable price or on Amazon, even at Ulta. I have this exact product linked below. Next, you need a highly effective moisturizer. You will specifically be looking for a cream or an ointment. Do not waste your time on lotions. They likely will not be enough for you. Lotions are too lightweight and drying. You need a thicker, more occlusive texture. One of my top recommendations to my patients who are looking for drugstore must-haves for dry skin is the Lipicar Balm AP Plus Intense Repair Moisturizing Cream. This is for extra dry skin on the body and face. It's so hydrating and it's my personal favorite body moisturizer to use. I love how this is thick in texture, yet it still absorbs well into the skin so that you don't feel greasy. It has shea butter in it as an emollient, which feels very nice and soothing on that dry skin. Now, if you are looking for a great face moisturizer for dry facial skin, you have to have the La Roche-Posay Double Repair Face Moisturizer. You have seen this in numerous of my other videos. This gets the best reviews. It's a personal favorite of mine, so I have that linked below too. Now, in addition to those, I highly recommend keeping a product like amylactin on hand to also help smooth out dry skin. It can peel away the buildup of flaky skin all while adding in moisturizer as well. The amylactin line is incredibly affordable. It's available on Amazon and at the drugstores, and it packs a really high concentration of lactic acid, which is what will help loosen dry skin flakes and smooth out the skin. You apply this once to twice daily all over the skin and you can notice a real improvement in the appearance of your skin. I talked extensively about this product line in my rough and bumpy skin video, so I will link that here for you as well. I also have all of the Amlactin products linked below. 
So the La Roche-Posay and Amlactin products are really great for repairing dry skin and bringing that moisture back in. But if you have even more stubborn dry skin, eczema or eczema prone skin, or you find that you still don't seem to be holding on to enough water to keep your skin hydrated at least 24 hours, then you should consider trying a product with added ceramides, urea, and moisturizing factors to more aggressively repair your skin barrier. So if you remember what I taught you is happening with dry skin or eczema in terms of the skin barrier breaking down and losing the essential components like ceramide and the other factors that are responsible for holding water in, well, products like this aim to replace those components and studies show that they can be quite effective. The Eucerin brand is well known and established and has extensive research and development that goes into their products. They get great reviews from patients as well, so these come highly recommended from me. Eucerin has an advanced repair cream that comes in a jar. This has the ceramides and natural moisturizing factor in it. It is great for both dry skin and eczema. Eucerin also has an eczema line with a body wash and an eczema relief cream. These both have colloidal oatmeal, which is a skin barrier protectant and helps soothe irritated skin and they have ceramides. I have all of these linked below. These are all suited for dry skin and eczema prone skin. But let's not stop here. Next up, I am taking you with me to the drugstore to show you my eczema must haves. And here I will show you the unique set of rules that you need to follow if you have eczema. I'll be going through the different sections of the drugstore from the medication side to the skincare side to show you how to stock your skincare cabinet with the absolute must haves to get the best control of your eczema. Make sure you are subscribed to my channel and turn on the notifications so you don't miss any upcoming videos. I'll see you soon.